And we are going to update people because we are not fake news here. We're going to update people on, on what happened. <laughs> We're going to fact story. check ourselves. Yes, we are. So it says Candace Owens accuses the Kardashian family of planting stories about her. That's a very bold claim to make. Uh, she basically said that uh, the Kardashians are just best friends with, with uh, Harvey from, from TMZ. <laughs> yeah, TMZ. Uh, and, and said, like, quit, quit planting stories about us. But as you know, as the resident Kim Kardashian stan here, who understands that she is, in fact, an evil genius, I don't doubt it. I well, don't doubt it for a second. Here's the fact check that we needed to do yes. on ourselves. Kanye was debanked in September. September 20th was when the note came in from, uh, from, JP, from JP Morgan, Morgan that they were cutting ties with him because he'd already talked a whole bunch of crap about them. Yeah. And, uh, and I still think that's a stupid reason to stop banking with someone, but that's just me. Yeah, um, it was not due to his anti-Semitic remarks on social media, as C Candace Owens seemed to hint that that was about. Yeah. It came before that. So, and I would like to correction. point out that I've seen more than a few people who uh, exist in this sphere calling, uh, uh, making comments like I'm like calling her out and saying like, "Hey, maybe like this was a little misleading." <laughs> yeah, and that's good. I want to see people. Has she commented on it? I have not. I didn't see a knowledge? comment. I have not seen a comment on it yet. But I do want to. I, I do think it's good when people hold people to account in their own in their okay. own sphere. I'm gonna read what Candace Owens put on her story About after the premiere of her documentary recently. She said, the Kardashians need to stop planting these ridiculous stories about me in TMZ. I'm honest to God, not the one you want to step to. Oh, uh, that's going to be clipped. <laughs> I am not Hollywood. I do not play these games. I took on Black Lives Matter and you do not want to turn my me to turn my attention to you, Kim Kardashian. I have never once persuaded Ye to do anything ever. And I respect you as a mother, and I hope your family gets back together. In fact, I'll pray for it. Your kids are beautiful, and I, above anyone else, know how family can be difficult. Anytime I've met you, you have never been anything but kind, and I have seen up close how your media machine works. Please do not insert my friendship with Ye into the narrative. I promise you I am not the one. I just, I can't get over her saying that. Because she, she's so, I don't know what the word is. She's so white collar. She's so corporate, she, she, I guess. She's very... Like, uh, nothing against Daily Wire, but this is a corporation that you're a part of, and, you know, there are certain... What you have to do is you have to picture her saying that, but at, like, a news desk. Yeah. Like, like that's, that's what that's, you have to picture. That's the vibe of it. So it's just, like, I'm not the one to step to. It just feels a little bit out of place. It, it, it made me laugh, because I'm, yeah. I'm just... Uh, and, let's, <laughs> so, and she also leaked a clip. She leaked a clip of... Um, who uh, of Kim Kardashian messaging Ray J back in like what year was it? Uh, it must have been what uh, like two thousand eight something like that. Like after uh, Kim Kardashian's superstar came it out, it has to be before after Ray Wh J began dating Whitney Houston. So it has to be before, at the very least, before Whitney Houston passed away. So we don't. This is not confirmed, but this is allegedly a voicemail that Kim Kardashian sent to Ray J. After he started dating Whitney Houston, calling Whitney Houston uh, a crackhead, I think the C word, an old hag. Can we play it? Yeah. Okay. So we calling got... her disgusting. Let's let's see what it. Let's listen to it. Uh, apologize for the volume if it's allowed to start. Okay. Some tapes are making the rounds of Kim Kardashian, and she's talking trash. This is years ago. It seems to be a voicemail that she mm. left Ray J, where it's not the sweet little Kim K that she presents today. She's nasty, she's calling Whitney Houston a crackhead, and she's yelling at Ray J. And this tape landed on my lap, and I am told that there is much, much more. Take a listen. Ray, it's Kim. I just want you to know that I think you are so disgusting and desperate. Who leaves their email address on the machine? I know, right? We clearly <laughs> want people to call you, but yet you won't call me back. And actually, you know what? Don't call me back. Don't ever call me back. I never want to talk to you ever, ever again. I think you're honestly a sick human being. And I think you are just so desperate that you'll do anything for f attention. And you're just so disgusting. Honestly, so, like, have fun with old tag Whitney 
she's a sin. Like, she's so That's Kim. sick. And, like, crack is definitely not whack with you guys. It is a super, you know, it's the most California honestly, voice like, ever. Honestly, makes me laugh on how disgusting you guys look. You know what I'm saying? You're f***ing Vegas with Whitney. And you need to go hang out with your old, like, friend. And it's not right, but it's okay. I'm definitely going to make it anyway because you guys are just disgusting and sick and stop being here with her. I don't understand it. Well, at, at the so end, she... And sick and you are just sick and desperate. So begins screaming. Thank you. <laughs> so to, to be fair, she's nuts. She comes off nuts. Um, and, and I think that's got to be Kim, the cadence of her speech. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be real. And, and, and it's just funny because... I'm it, surprised at how little this coverage this this voicemail is getting. And they're not wrong because if there's one thing that Candace Owens is, is it's very smart and very well prepared when she makes her arguments, right? So uh, I wouldn't want to be like... But it's like you're going up against the machine. You're, you're not going up against Kim Kardashian. You're going up against literally the entirety of the Hollywood and modern day mainstream media ecosystem, when yeah. you take on these groups, so that I have a, a lot of respect for 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 the ability to stand on what you believe. You know, don't tell, don't pull me into your drama. That's fine. Yeah, but, but, but at just... the same time, by hanging out with Kanye mm -hmm. in the middle of what a lot of people are calling his worst mental break yet, which of you've course got is... to accept that news is going to cover that, yeah. and yep. it's controversial because you yourself are a controversial figure, just like Kanye is. I'm sure that's why they get along. Yep. So where do you think she got the tape from? <laughs> I would love to know. She just said that it fell into her lap. Did Kanye just like... Here, I don't know. I mean, Ray sitting? J was present at the premiere yes. of Candace's documentary. Yeah. Maybe Ray J was the one who supplied it to her. He just has it on an actual... V like, They're not good at covering your tracks, folks. It would be very cool if he had it on like an actual answering machine tape from like the 90s. Like the <laughs> little tape that looks like this. It's like this, oh, you, you weren't even alive yet. But that, it's a thing. Like, you put the little tape in the answering machine, you close the lid. I wasn't around for uh, answering machines. Um, have you ever seen the, the TikToks or, or the reels of, like, the people? It's like making your voicemail in 2004, and you hold your phone up to, like, a song that's playing. And then you stop it, and you're like, yeah, hit me up if you want to click. It's, it's really You funny. did that? No, I didn't. But okay. it's, uh, my brother definitely did. That's funny. Um, and I, I, uh, I love it because the thing is, like, she sounds like the most vindictive, not media trained. We talk a lot about being media trained. Mm -hmm. That was clearly before she had mastered her media trained technique. I bet you, uh, I don't think she would leave a voicemail like that now. Well, what you said about it is, like, this is how people in Hollywood talk when they think that no one is going to listen. Yeah. Or they think no yeah. one's listening. I That's think that I a lot of people in in the entertainment industry speak this way to people they believe to be subordinates. Yeah. Because they believe that they don't have any accountability. And yeah. oftentimes that's true. What if she ended it with like, just go work harder or whatever she said. In go that. get your go. effing ass up and work. Yes. Uh, it's uh, like, get up and work. Get up and work. <laughs> but this was because at the time, Ray J was actually getting to be more famous than her. And that's like inconceivable today. I know, right? The level she's at right now, but like <laughs> you're like holy crap. Dating Whitney Houston at the time was really good for for his public image. I just um, after uh, what did I watch recently? I, I watched uh, like a Whitney Houston perform "I Will Always Love You" live at like the ninety, <laughs> like the ninety four. I was like like listening to it at like because like somebody's like I was I was talking to somebody about. Um, music that brought people together and there was like a couple examples i gave of like when crowds seemed more because we were talking about lizzo and being like uh how she's like i don't make music for white people but then like she's making music for like like from she's making music for white college yeah. girls uh, and, essentially uh, and i was thinking about it because there was a there's this great tape of like whitney houston from or i'm sorry of mariah carey from madison square garden in 1995 performing like always be my baby it's like the most diverse crowd you've ever seen in your entire life mm -hmm. and you think about how different the world was in the 90s you you wouldn't i don't think you'd even be able to fathom it because like like i was only 
I, I was like nine years old at that time. But I look back and I wasn't really old enough to understand what was going on. But I was looking at that and I'm like, just look at how much more of a coalition we were as a people, or at least it felt that way. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe that's just how we remember it. Maybe there's rose colored glasses there. But imagine she's in that crowd and she's like, I didn't make music for half of you people here at this concert. But at the time, she would have never said that because there wasn't the same I don't think Mariah, mass media. Yeah, I don't think Mariah Carey would have said it anyway. But uh, or like, did you, did you see the tape yesterday of the coach for the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where the the reporter tries to like bait him into talking about? They're like, "You're one of two black coaches in the NFL," and he's like, "Yeah, we don't see race here." Like, like they, she's like, well, don't you think, but don't you think it's important that you're, uh, that you're a, a representate, that you're a form of representation for these people. And like the way she phrases it is these so, people. it's so racist. And you're just like, and the dude just shuts this chick down and it's the most beautiful yeah, thing I've seen. Cause when you don't respond in kind, it's more embarrassing for the person who asks. Yeah. I think being media trained these days should be about not giving in to the leading questions that the yeah. media gives you. Um, the same way that we were talking about statesmanship earlier. Uh, see if we can find it. To know how to respond gracefully and be unaffected by those polarizing questions that the media asks now to get the headline that's like, coach calls out. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I don't know. They they want the slams. This person slams, slams the other person. This person yeah. calls out the other person, uh, claps back at the other person. That type of mass media manipulation didn't exist when Mariah Carey was performing to that diverse crowd, and just the same way she she didn't feel the need to say anything like that. And it makes me sad. It, it makes me sad. Having not lived through it, I. Like, obviously, I can't, like, grieve a, that past yeah. that I didn't experience. Let's see if I can play this. Are you sure it's not copywritten? Mm, oh, it might be. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Uh, I don't know if it, if it might be copyrighted. So, But, okay. yeah, but the, the guy shuts down this reporter, and he's just like, look, it's it's like it's, yeah. it's a meritocracy in sports anyways. Like, it's just, I miss that. I, I know we're kind of off topic here, but I, I, I miss that. I, I miss mm -hmm. that kind of... Uh, listening to uh, it came up to me with the Whitney Houston thing because I was thinking about the idea that the concept of love is no longer like something that they actually championed in music. The same, like, I was talking to someone about how like the mm. the reason the Top Gun Maverick, like the Lady Gaga song at the end, is so is so powerful is because you don't really hear ballads like that anymore. Uh, well, which Lizzo song of like her hits is about love? It, they're all. About her. Independent women. Lizzo's songs are yeah. about Lizzo. Yeah. And I don't understand how that's interesting or appealing to, to anyone. Yeah. That, like, to the mainstream audience, but somehow it is. Do you think there's a, a, a certain amazing level of narcissism about, about the idea that you're, like, a representative for all people, like, that look like you? Like, I don't, like... Like that, that's just it seems weird to me like I, I would never I, I, w I would feel it weird that anybody would feel that they are uh, um, qualified to take on such a such a mantle I think you've got to be a narcissist to take on a responsibility like that and think that yeah. it's owed to you yeah so do you think that uh, Candace Owens keeps going after <laughs> God Kim, Kim I mean, I, I respect the boldness. Five years ago, I would never. Obviously, have, I. <laughs> nowhere on my end. Uh, nowhere on my like lead up to nuclear war bingo card did I ever. When see did Candace you find out uh, who Candace Owens was? Um, 2017, probably 2018. I, like it's been a while since she's been it's on my years, radar. Yeah. But like for people who are just Kanye fans watching yeah. Kanye, they'll have no idea. And, and looking into the fact that he's friends with this random woman, like I, I can't imagine what they think she is or stands for yeah. and why she's coming after his ex-wife. I'm also going, I also want to make an, another funny trope that I've been talking about. I'd love to do a whole segment on tropes that have died. Like we talk about uh, um, women being saved, things like that. I'd argue mm -hmm. that that trope has been dying for a long time. But there's a, a lot of things you'll see in movies and television shows that it's like, um, I, I don't want to be seen as a victim where now it's like everyone wants to be seen as a victim. I think like people want to be seen as a victim when it requires no vulnerability from them. Yeah. 
like and it requires all of the showmanship and vulnerability from the other party who supposedly hurt them and it's it's i've actually kind of put that on myself sometimes because like i'm very open about my history with substance abuse but i'm doing it from a from a place of where i'm in a good place now Mm -hmm. right so it's it's a lot less vulnerable when you're on the other side of that problem right where you're uh you're in a good place now so it's you feel safer talking about it uh, I would argue that it's harder to be that open about it when you're still going through the hardest parts of it. Imagine if you were still in the middle of like your lowest place and there were people going to a media outlet saying that they're an insider yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yep. And like how that would make you want to push everyone away because you can't trust anyone. Yeah. I think that's what Candace was really trying to call out. Is Oh, that was, yeah, it was because they were like, they think that he's influencing, that she's influencing him. Like she has the some insiders magical... in Kanye's life, the people he's closest to who suspiciously aren't talking to him yeah. and have less contact with him than Candace Owens does. They supposedly know what's really going on and what her true intentions are. Like Kanye doesn't even have enough credibility anymore for her to use him for yeah. those purposes. Um, yeah, I that's wanna, kind of like, interesting because like he doesn't like he, it's yeah. not like his name like as, as much as I love Kanye's music and I love Kanye as like an artist and uh, what I think he represents. He's like the, the main his mainstream credibility has now been ruined by the even, mainstream media. Yeah, even in the eyes of people who are fond of Kanye, like yeah. his credibility has been hurt. Yeah, probably rightly so. I think he is going through some kind of mental health struggle i don't know to what degree but like i don't know about that I, I, he i mean i think he clearly doesn't have a lot of people close to him who he can talk to privately i think it's a two-way street like they deserve the expectation that those correspondences are kept private quiet, yeah. like when when Diddy, for example, was texting Kanye and being like, let's meet up in person and talk about this in person. Yeah. I think, I, like, I respect that. And he still had his conversation, his texts with Kanye posted publicly for everyone to see. Yeah. That, I don't think that that's, like, the mindset of someone who is, like, stable. Okay. To be posting I, things like that. I guess maybe just uh, because his art tends to fall in the same line, so it all kind of blends together to me, but I also love the art, so... Mm -hmm. I want to like continue reading through what yeah. Candace said to, to Kim. Supposing already that Kim read this. I don't know if she has. Do you think she has? Does she pay that close attention? <laughs> She's a busy woman. There's so much going like, on in Kim Kardashian's it, world. It's I don't almost know. more. Yeah. Did you see the thing about her uh, thinking about her grandma while having sex with Pete Davidson by yeah, a fireplace? Um, when you're when you're when that's part of your life, I imagine you're uh, you're a busy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I. I it's almost more like, like, is that like, it's kind of the meme of like, um, I don't even know who you are. Like you ruined my whole life. I don't even know who you are. Yeah, and exactly. Like, Candace <laughs> Owens says all this and Kim Kardashian's like, who the hell are you? Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. So she said, call your boy Harvey and tell him to pull the dogs off or to respectfully reach out next time the quote sources say anything else that is completely made up. Don't make me have to do the greatest lie ever sold part two kardashian cartel <laughs> tmz you are absolute trash for running that made-up article while ignoring the bigger story which is that yay spoke to reports la spoke to reporters last night about tweets and clarified his thoughts or that i exposed the blm narrative which you guys so heavily pushed uh for those of you that want to know what i'm talking about a story was shopped around just ahead of my premiere claiming that i'm working as an official advisor to yay taking his money and influencing his decisions. It also suggested that I plotted the White Lives Matter t-shirt weeks ahead of the show. Every single one of the above points is a complete and utter lie meant to change public perception of me. That sounds like grounds for defamation. The purpose of lies is control. It's a means to make it seem as though I'm taking advantage of a mentally ill person and trying to line my own. If that narrative was implied about a Jewish person, it would be anti-Semitic. So why is that implication toward a black person not racist by the media standards? Why isn't a racist trope why isn't it a racist trope for them to suggest that I am stealing from Ye? 
she's so well spoken and so concise and clear with her words. Like I envy her ability to uh, communicate accurately, actively. Uh, it's always very impressive. But to it's me. still so like. The, those remarks are still so cutting. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> she said, uh, please keep that same energy when TMZ comes out and suggests that I'm some poor black beep that needs to steal and not a successful businesswoman. I came from nothing. I did not have a Hollywood father for a dad or I, parents that could afford to put me through school. I didn't drop a sex tape to enter the cultural conversation. You will respect me. You can disagree with me. You don't have to like me, but you will respect me. I am not some groupie or Instagram thought that will tolerate your sources say BS. Yeah. You can pick up the phone and call me directly if you have any questions, Kim Kardashian. As I said, I respect you as a good mother to those beautiful children. So respect me enough to know that I would never influence someone to do anything that goes against their own family. Interesting, right? Very interesting. Um, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there go for it what do you think uh, the racial dimension to it i disagree with in what way i understand that there's a double standard applied when it's someone who ideologically disagrees with that media machine yeah but there is some truth to the fact that you're that, that they decide what is racist what is sexist what is homophobic what is transphobic and it's never applied evenly and it's never applied with any level of 50 50 dissemination between sides i guess she's right in um digging through tmz's motivation or the implication they were making about Candace Owens is I, that she's a grifter who needs to siphon off Kanye's clout and success and money in order to excel in her own right. That's not true. And they also, uh, I, I will point out that TMZ has been less than, um, I, I actually used to be quite kind of impressed at how unbiased TMZ could be at times. Yeah, Obviously, we made jokes about that on the show before. There's bias in what you choose to cover, mm -hmm. but I found that unless they're talking about Donald Trump or Kanye, they're pretty good about staying out of the the language that seems to imply a side. Um, they don't have that ability with with Trump or, or Kanye for some reason. Or or Candace Owens. Yes. Well, I, I don't see a lot of articles from them on Candace but Owens. There's but. no proof that Kim Kardashian. Or Kim Kardashian's PR team, I can't imagine how many people are a part of that, um, are solely responsible for planting this story. Thank you. Because, like, that is how it appears when he's at the premiere in the middle of one of the most, like, controversial headline consumed periods of his life he's ever been in and for a documentary that actually is relevant to some, yeah. a statement that he made the week before so even if you're not malicious you could draw that inference like it does seem like a cl a clout symbiotic relationship yeah. at the very least um, which is fine yeah there's but it is unfair to say that. that she is like basically grifting stealing yeah. from kanye i i didn't remember tmz's article explicitly claiming that kanye is paying her as an official advisor but there is the context that he he told tucker he paid 530 different people <laughs> to be consultants for him last man, year man that consultant class we need that to get in he, on that kanye is like solely responsible for this bloated consultant class if anybody needs are overpaid for bad advice if anybody needs a consultant you know and it's also a dead end to try to consult kanye's brand when he's <coughs> always going to be the czar of absolutely everything yeah. you're the head of a department in yeezy Forget about having self determination. You, you don't because really he's have in charge a, of everything. Yeah. Like the, you can give advice. That's how he operates. He says that he hires people in his company not to listen to him. <laughs> he and has it to still have doesn't work. Because um, he's just he's intensely individualistic. I think that's why I identify so heavily. He's with him. intensely visionary and not 
as action oriented as a businessman probably needs to be. I think that it's it's his uh, desire to be uh, extremely individualistic in a world that's constantly trying to zap that and strip that from him. That always like like when we're here, right? There's a lot of times where it's like I feel a certain amount of happiness when I realize that I don't always agree or don't agree with the people that I'm closest to here because I don't ever want to feel like I'm letting uh, the people that uh, in my life influence my decisions too heavily, right? Because that's you lead yourself open for um, manipulation when things like that happen. So maybe that's just a unique trait to me and it's uh, a bit over mm -hmm. the top, but I don't like the idea that you agree with everyone all the time. And I think everyone can understand that. But for him, it goes to another level. Um, he does not like being told what to do in a, in a business where you kind of have to learn to go along to get along for most people They have to learn to go along to get along. He just refuses to I do that. I think Kanye's is a completely warranted uh, Overreaction yeah. to every party around him trying to throw a leash on him Also somebody in the chat asked what your uh, what favorite Kanye song was to the people in the chat I just want to say that mine's never let me down never let uh, and uh, we can make it better any favorite Kanye songs? Mm, I don't know. I'd have to think about have that. Have to think about it? Yeah. It's been a while since I've listened to Kanye. I was listening to him a lot when uh, Jesus is King came See, I've, out. Ne I've never listened to the... You never listened to that? I never listened to the gospel album. Why is that? I just never listened to it. I like Jail Part 2 as well. Uh, it's really funny because he like he like plays with DaBaby and DaBaby. Like, everyone hates DaBaby now. Uh, Why is that? Uh, he's homophobic. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, that, I can't believe that lasted. Yeah, You're kidding, that, that, right? That that held on very, very, very strong. So, uh, I I don't know if Kim is going to come back after uh, after Candace Owens. I I think it's more than likely that Kim will see this as the type of thing where she just lets it blow over. Uh, well, that's usually her strategy yeah. with everything yeah. is like ignore, deny, deny, deny. To quote. Roderick from Diary of a Wimpy well, Kid. Deny, deny, deny. Especially if, if the media doesn't pick up the tape. The tape, if, if that was any other... They didn't. And that's absolutely absurd. And if anything, it lends credibility yeah. to what Candace is saying, which is that she runs everything that is said about her. If the tape had... But he, actually, I would make the argument that if that tape had come from a less politically opposed person they if would that play. tape had been sold to tmz from by else. an anonymous source if ray j had done it not if, under the guise of of this if I think ray j had done play. it without <laughs> we basically know that ray j gave it to probably to candace owens i don't know why he chose but, that route was there somebody out there with a cell interceptor or something and like yeah how else would she have gotten it the like, raycon money is good enough that he doesn't need to sell it to tmz Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.